Fill in the blank with an appropriate inequality symbol. Well, what's an inequality symbol? There's two basic ones, so let's take a look at them. When it looks like an arrow pointing to the left, that's the phrase is less than. When we see what looks like an arrow pointing to the right, that's the phrase is greater than, is bigger than, whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the two numbers and see which symbol seems to work. Negative 4 is going to be less than 5, so we're going to put the is less than symbol there. Negative 10 is greater than negative 17. And you might be thinking, whoa, 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 10 is smaller than 17. It sure is. But negative 10 is a larger number than negative 17. Remember, the larger the negative, the smaller the number. Negative 4.5 is less than negative 4.16 because, again, for the same reasons. Negative 4.5 is the same as 4.50, and that is a larger number than 4.16. So a larger negative means it's smaller. So, yeah, there's other inequalities, too. That stands for is less than or equal to. That stands for is greater than or equal to, but we're only concerning ourselves with these two main ones. And that's how you do this problem, fun. To graph an inequality, you're going to be given some type of variable, some type of inequality symbol in a number. Now, what this means is we need to demonstrate on this graph what it means, the fact that n is going to be less than or equal to negative five. So let's put negative five right there. We'll fill in the rest of these spots with numbers. It doesn't matter where we put the negative five as long as we have the others. All right, so every number line is different. Now, less than or equal to means you are allowed to include negative five. So like, for example, negative five is less than or equal to negative five. So what you do is you go to that negative five, you draw a circle and you fill it in. Now, why fill it in? Because if you're including negative 5, if negative 5 is going to be equal to that n, you're going to fill it in. Now, n's got to be everything less than that, which means anything smaller, like, you know, negative 6 is less than or equal to negative 5, or negative 8 is less than or equal to negative 5. So what we do is we shade to the left of our filled-in circle to the left. And the way that I remember this is if your variable is on the left, that guy acts as an arrow. So it points to the left. Now what this graph means is I could take any number from negative 5 to the left, like negative 8, negative 100, negative 5.5, and put it in here and have it be a true statement. Like negative 7 is less than or equal to negative 5. Negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 5. It's all good. And that's how you graph an inequality. We are being asked to graph r is greater than 2. Now, what this means is r is going to represent any number larger than 2. Is it going to be equal to 2? No. Any number, decimals, fractions, larger than 2. So to make our number line, we go down here, we put 2 wherever, and we just kind of complete the rest of the number line if you're given a blank one like so. As long as 2 is on there, oh, that should be regular one. As long as 2 is on there, it really doesn't matter uh, where you put the 2, as long as it's on there we go. All right. Now, if you are allowed to include 2, you would put a circle at 2 and fill it in. However, this is not going to be equal to 2. You put a circle at 2 and don't fill it in. That means you're not allowed to include 2. R is going to be everything greater than it, like 3, like 5.5, like 2.5. So what we do is we shade everything to the right of 2. Now, an easy way to remember this is if you have an inequality and your variable is on the left, the symbol right there acts as an arrow to the direction you're supposed to go. And what this graph represents is any number that is shaded here, like 6, like 100, like 2.9. You can plug in here, 6 is greater than 2, 100 is greater than 2, 2.9 is greater than 2, it all works. You can't plug in negative 2, 0, regular 2, and have that be a true statement. 
Graph negative 2 is greater than b. Whenever I graph inequalities, I want my variable on the left. Well, my variable's not on the left, so how do we fix this? Well, let's use common sense. If negative 2 is bigger than b, then b is smaller than negative 2. You just flip everything. If negative 2 is greater than b, then b is less than negative 2. Now we have enough to graph, or at least I feel comfortable graphing. So we put a negative 2 wherever we want, and then we fill out the rest of our number line like so. Like so. Like so. B is less than negative 2. So the way you graph that is you go to negative 2 and you put a circle. Now we're not going to fill this circle in because B is not equal to negative 2. It's just everything less than negative 2, like negative 2.5 and negative 4.9 and negative a billion. So what we're going to do is we're going to shade everything to the left of this. Now again, I like putting my variable on the left side because of inequalities. And the reason why is when your variable's on the left side of your inequality, your inequality symbol acts as an arrow pointing in the direction that you're supposed to go. So what this green shading means is I can take any number from over here, like negative four, negative a million, and plug it into right there, and it'll be a true statement. Negative two is bigger than negative a million. Negative two is greater than negative four. Negative two is greater than negative 5.99999, and so on and so forth. Write an inequality represented by the graph. Well, in order to have an inequality, we need to have a variable. Now, if my variable is on the left side of my inequality, the arrow is going to tell me which uh, inequality symbol I'm going to use. So since this is going to the left, that means I care about everything less than. Now, what I have to do next is look at the circle. Is the circle filled in? No. So you are not going to fill in the or equal to. Since it's circled at 2, my inequality is going to be x is less than 2, and that's it. I'm done. Solve and graph n minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 14. In order to solve an inequality, you have to remember two things. Thing number one, if you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the sign. Thing number two is if your variable is on the right and you end up with something like 5 is greater than n, then just flip everything. n is less than 5. Now, that's not going to happen here, but these are important rules to remember. The rest is just like solving a regular equation. Is n completely alone by itself? No. Minus 6 is in the way. How do I get rid of subtracting 6? The inverse is adding 6, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides cross you out, drop down the n, drop down the less than or equal to, negative 14 plus 6 is negative 8. I've solved my inequality, no flipping was necessary, bada bing. What I have to do now is graph that. So I go to my number line, I only care about putting negative 8 somewhere, and then we just write out the rest of the number line if you're given a blank number line like I gave myself. Like so. Like this. Like that. Now, n is allowed to be negative 8, so we go down to negative 8, and we circle negative 8 and fill it in. Now, why is n allowed to be negative 8? Because it's equal to negative 8. n is also going to be everything smaller than negative 8. So this looks to me like an arrow pointing to the left, so we're going to shade everything pointing to the left. N is less than or equal to negative 8 means I can pick any number that's smaller than negative 8 and including negative 8. I could take that number and plug it into the original problem. So if I took like negative 14, negative 14 minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 14. Negative 100 is way over here. Negative 100 minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 14. I can plug in negative 8 because we're including negative 8. Negative 8 minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 14. That's what that green shading represents, and we're done.
solve and graph this inequality. When graphing inequalities, there's two things that you have to remember. First things first, when solving, if you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the symbol. Also, if your variable's on the right, so if I have something like 3 is less than n, that becomes n is greater than 3. Flip everything. Otherwise, solving an inequality is just like solving an equation. So negative 3 is being multiplied to x. How do I get rid of being multiplied to negative 3? Divide both sides by negative 3. And right away, we have one of these rules in play right here. These guys cross out. x drops down. But since I divided both sides by a negative, I flip the greater than symbol to a less than symbol. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. So in order to graph this, and by the way, that's solved for, okay, done. Now I have to graph it. In order to graph it, I just put negative 1 somewhere on the number line, and then I fill in the rest like so, like so. X is less than negative 1 means I put a circle at negative 1, but don't fill it in. Why don't fill it in? Because X is not equal to negative 1, so we're not allowed to include negative 1. x is anything smaller than it, like negative 3 and negative 5. And since this looks like an arrow pointing to the left, I guess it would make sense that we're going to draw out a shading pointing to the left. So what this red shading means is if I take any number here, negative 5, negative 3.5, uh, negative a billion, and multiply it to negative 3, I get something bigger than 3. So negative 3 times negative 4 is greater than 3. Negative 5 and a half times negative 3 is greater than 3, and so on and so forth. Dunzo. Solve and graph 32 is greater than or equal to negative 16 times p. Whenever you're being asked to solve an inequality, you have to remember two very important things. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the sign. If p is on the right side, or if your variable is on the right side, so if you have something like 8 is greater than p, make sure you change it to p is less than 8. Flip everything. We want our variables on the left. So both of these are actually going to happen here. So first things first, p is not all by itself. Negative 16 is being multiplied to p. So in order to get rid of being multiplied, you have to divide both sides by negative 16. So divide both sides by negative 16, cross you out. 32 divided by negative 16 is negative 2. Since I divided both sides by a negative, that greater than or equal to symbol flips and becomes less than or equal to, and just P is left. Now with inequalities, I like my variable on the left side. So if negative 2 is less than or equal to P, that would mean P is greater than or equal to negative 2, just flipped everything. Now we solved there, the solving part Chekarewski. Now what I have to do is graph. So I'm going to make sure I put negative 2 on my number line, and then I just fill in the rest like this, like that, like this. Uh, if p is greater than or equal to negative 2, I'm going to make sure I put a circle at negative 2. Now, since it's or equal to, I'm allowed to fill that circle in like that. P is going to be anything greater than or equal to it, which means numbers like 0 is greater than and 2.5 is greater than. So I'm just going to shade in everything to the right. And what that purple shading means is I'm allowed to take any of these numbers and plug it into this original inequality, and it'll be a true statement. Like I can say 32 is greater than or equal to negative 16 times 1, and that would be true. So we solved, we graphed. We conquered the world. Did we like and subscribe? I pray you did, so please do. Solve and graph that inequality right there. All right, when solving an inequality, there's two things you have to remember. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the symbol. If you have your variable on the right side, so if you have like something like uh, 3 is greater than n, just turn it into n is less than 3. Not sure any of that's going to happen here, but now we know. We're going to solve this like a regular old equation. I have 2 times x plus 4. I have to get rid of the 2. I have to get rid of the 4. Which one do I get rid of first? The positive 4. So we subtract 4 
and we subtract 4 and cross you out. Drop down 2x, drop down the greater than or equal to, drop down the 20. Okay, I didn't divide, I didn't need to, or nothing yet. Now what I do now is I divide both sides by positive 2, which means don't flip the sign. So x is going to be greater than or equal to 10, and that's me solving my inequality. Now I have to graph, so make sure you put 10 somewhere on the number line, and then you just put the rest in place. doesn't really matter where you put the 10, as long as you have the 10 somewhere. Now, in order to graph x is greater than or equal to 10, uh, you're going to put a circle at 10 and fill it in. Why fill it in? Because it's equal to 10. All of my answers are going to be bigger than 10, like 11 and 12.5 and a billion. Now, what that green shading means is I can pick any number in that green shaded region. I can pick 10. I can pick 12 and a half. Plug it into the original equation and do 2 times 12 and a half plus 4, and that will be greater than or equal to 24. Any number here will make that a true statement. So that's it. We're done. All right, at this point, you should have seen my other solving inequalities videos, so you know the rules. If we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative, you flip the sign, or if your variable's on the right side, you flip everything. Let's see if that even happens. I have a distributed property problem. Negative 3 times p is negative 3p. Negative 3 times 1 is minus 3 less than or equal to negative 18. I have to get p all by itself. Since negative 3 is being multiplied to p, and also I'm subtracting 3, I'm going to add 3 to both sides first. Drop down the negative 3p is less than or equal to negative 15. Now here, 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 I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. When you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, you flip the sign. So less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 is positive 5. And so the solve part of this problem is donezo funzo. Now what I need to do is I need to make a number line, so I'll put 5 wherever I want as long as I have 5 there, and I'll just fill out the rest like so. Oh, wow. Like so. That's supposed to be a regular 2, not negative 2. P is greater than or equal to regular 5, means I go to 5 and I put a circle there. I'm going to fill that circle in. Why? Because I'm including 5 in my answer. Now, p is going to be bigger also than 5, so numbers like 6.5 and 9. I'm allowed to circle all of those, so I'm just going to put a nice uh, shaded line right there. Now, what that shaded line means is any of these numbers I'm allowed to plug into the original problem, like 10, like 100, like 7, and plug it in, do a little bit of PEMDAS on the left, and no matter what, I will get a number smaller than or equal to negative 18. All right, so that's how you solve and graph an uglier looking inequality equation. Solve and graph an inequality. All right, well, by now you should know that when solving an inequality, if you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the sign. If your variable's on the right side, you flip everything. That's not going to happen here. I need to get n all by itself, so we're going to solve this like a regular old equation. Let's get rid of that 4 first by subtracting 4 from both sides. Cross u out. Drop down n over 3. Drop down the is less than, and 6 minus 4 is 2. Is n all by itself? Nar. In order to get n all by itself, we're going to wrap both sides in parentheses and multiply both sides by 3 because 3 divides n. Okay? I'm multiplying both sides by a positive, so guess what? Don't flip the sign. Now, we just solved our inequality. So the solve part is a Chekarewski. Now, what we have to do is make our number line. So as long as you have 6 somewhere, you're in good shape. You just fill in the rest of these numbers like so. n is going to be less than 6. So you put a circle at regular 6. Do not fill it in. Why are we not going to fill it in? Because you don't include 6 in our answer. But what we are going to include is everything smaller than 6, like 5 and 1 and negative 80 billions. So we shade in everything to the left. 
And what this blue shading means is I'm allowed to take any number that fits in the blue shading, plug it into N. Like if I took four and did four divided by three plus four, I would definitely get a number smaller than six. Okay, so that's how you solve and graph an inequality. All right, we got ourselves an inequality to solve, so let's start solving it. Remember, you solve an inequality like regular equations, except there's rules when you deal with dividing, multiplying by negatives, stuff like that. But let's see if that even happens. 15 is on the bottom. Whenever you have an entire side being divided by a number, let's get rid of that number by multiplying both sides by 15. Don't know why I have the thicker version of the marker, but it's too late. I'm not going back. All right, now, <clears throat> when you divide both sides by 15, the 15's on the bottom, cross out, okay? Drop down the negative 9 plus A, the fraction bar isn't necessary anymore. Drop down the greater than, and 1 times 15 is 15. Now, A is not alone by itself. In order to get A all by itself, we're going to add 9, add 9 to both sides. Drop down the A. Drop down the is greater than, and 15 plus 9 is 24. So that's me solving this. No flipping of signs, nothing crazy, just had to get rid of that 15. That was the only problematic part. doesn't matter where you put 24. As long as 24 is on the line, then you put in the other numbers to fill in everything because it's nice looking and it's pretty, even though I wish I didn't make number lines that have so many spaces. Because Although the more time I use on these videos, the more money I make. Now, A is greater than 24, so I put a circle at 24, and I don't fill it in because A is not allowed to equal 24. It's only allowed to be everything bigger than 24, like 24 and a half and 27 and a billion. So I shade everything to the right because A is allowed to be everything bigger than 24. What that means is anything covered in this red shaded region, 25, 30, a billion, if I were to plug it into A and do all the math over here on the left, it would be bigger than one. Okay, so that's how you solve and graph an inequality. Dunzo. Solve and graph an inequality. Uh, what I'm looking at here is negatives with a K on the right side, so I'm going to remind myself of two things. Okay, if you multiply or if you divide by a negative, you flip the sign. Also, if your variable's on the right side and you want to solve it, just flip everything like that. I have a feeling both of those things are going to happen here because I see a negative and I see a K on the right, so let's just be prepared for it. This is distributed property. Negative 5 is being multiplied to K, so negative 5 times K and negative 5 times negative 3. Let me make a skinnier pen. Negative 5 times K is negative 5K. Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. Drop down the negative 90, drop down the greater than or equal to. That part hasn't changed. Now I have to get K, which is on the right side all by itself. Negative 5 is being multiplied to k, but more importantly right now, 15 is being added to my k, so I have to get rid of the number that's floating around first. Subtract both sides by 15 like so. Negative 90 minus 15 is negative 105. So negative 105 is greater than or equal to negative 5k. Is k all by itself? No. Negative 5 is being multiplied to k. How do I get rid of a negative 5 being multiplied to k? Divide both sides by a negative. When you divide both sides by a negative, that's where you flip the sign. Negative over a negative is a positive. 100 over 5 is mm, 21. And k is all alone on the right. So that happened. And guess what? That's about to happen. I don't like my variable on the right side. So if 21 is less than or equal to k, that means k is greater than or equal to 21. Now, in order to graph this, we need to put 21 somewhere on our number line and then just fill in the rest like so. Tedious, yes. Takes a while, yes. The more time I use makes me more YouTube money, yes. So it's worth it. Now, in order to graph k is greater than or equal to 21, you're going to put a circle at 21. In this case, we're going to fill it in. Why? Because k is allowed to be equal to 21. k is also allowed to be greater than 21, so numbers like 22 and 25 and all of these. So let's just fill in.
the entire right side. What this red shading means is any number that's covered by this red shading, like 21 and a half, uh, 25, a billion, if I were to take that number and replace it with K, or replace K with that number, and do the math on the right side, it will be greater than or equal to negative 90. Okay? So that's how you solve and graph an inequality. We had a lot of flipping going on. It's like I'm out of gymnastics meet. <laughs> like and subscribe. All right, well, this one's not going to be pleasant, but we'll do it anyway because that's fun. Let's multiply both sides by 4. Whenever you divide an entire side by a number, the first thing you're going to want to do is get rid of that number by multiplying both sides by 4. So that's taken care of. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 is greater than, now that the 4s are gone, 12 plus x. Now, remember, solving an inequality is the same as solving an equation with two extra rules. One of those rules will apply. We'll get there. But x is not all by itself. 12 is floating around. How do you get rid of a positive 12 that's just floating around? Well, subtract 12, of course. And that gets us negative 4 minus 12 is negative 16 is greater than x. Now, again, what I just said is solving an inequality is just like solving an equation with two rules. One rule involves dividing or multiplying by a negative. That didn't happen. The other rule was swapping where your variable belongs. I like my variable on the left. So if negative 16 is greater than x, that means x is less than negative 16, and you literally flip-flop everything, including the sign. Now that we have negative 16, we can put some numbers down here and fill everything in. The numbers really don't matter, or the placement of the number, the original number doesn't matter as long as you have negative 16 somewhere on it. This always takes forever. Don't know why I do this to myself. And we're done. Since x is less than and not less than or equal to uh, negative 16. We're going to take a circle on negative 16, but not fill it in. Since x is everything smaller than it, we're going to fill in everything to the left of it. Now, what this green shaded arrow indicates is any number that is smaller than negative 16, like negative 20, like negative a million, I can plug into the original equation and this will give me a true statement. I'm not allowed to include negative 16, but I'm allowed to include like negative 16.01. Anything smaller than it will do just fine. So that's how you solve and graph this inequality. All right, solve and graph this inequality right here. What I'm looking at is several things happening on the left side of a less than symbol. And if you notice that two of those things are like terms and they're on the same side, just combine them. 6x and 6x add up to 12x. Drop down plus 2, drop down less than 14. Now, solving an inequality is just like solving an equation. You just have to be careful when you multiply or divide by a negative or swap things. Neither of that's going to happen. So I'm going to treat this like an inequality. I'm adding 2, so I'm going to do the inverse, which is minus 2, minus 2. That crosses out. Drop down 12x. Drop down less than. Drop down 14 minus 2 is 12. Is 12 all by, I'm sorry, is x all by itself? No. Uh, 12 is being multiplied to it, so the inverse of multiply 12 is divide 12. So divide 12 from both sides, that crosses out, drop down the x, drop down the less than, drop down the 1, and I have my answer. Now, I'm going to put 1s here and then, you know, fill in all the numbers after that. When you're making yourself a number line, all you really have to worry about is the number that matters, like since x is less than 1, I'm going to put a circle at 1 and not fill it in because we're not allowed to include 1. Since x is everything smaller than 1, I'm going to shade everything to the left of 1. Now, what this blue line means is any of these numbers that are covered by this blue shading, like negative 2 or negative 1,000, if I were to take any of those numbers and put that into the original equation, so like 6 times negative 1,000 plus 2 times plus 6 times negative 1,000, that will end up being less than 14, and that's what we want. So we did it. 
solve and graph this inequality right here. Well, this inequality is kind of like an equation. When I see problems that are kind of like equations with distributed property, that's the first thing I'm going to do. So 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 3r is 15r. Drop down the plus 7. Drop down the greater than or equal to 127, and step one is done. However, what I notice is on the left side, I have like terms. And if you have like terms on a side of an equation or an inequality, combine them. So 37 is 30 plus 7. Drop down the plus 15r. Drop down the greater than or equal to. Drop down the 127. Subtract 37 from both sides because that's the inverse of plus 37. Drop down the 15r. Drop down the greater than or equal to. Drop down the 90. r is still not alone. 15 is being multiplied to r. So in order to get rid of that 15, let's do the inverse, which is divide 15. We're going to end up saying r is greater than or equal to 6. That's our solve part. So what I want to do is make sure I have a 6 represented on my number line, like so. And then we'll fill in all the numbers that we have to fill in because I make these number lines so big. Since r is greater than or equal to 6, I'm going to put a circle at 6 and fill it in. Why fill it in? Because r is any number larger than or equal to 6, which means 6 count. And 6 since 6 counts and everything greater than that counts, I'm going to fill in everything to the right of it. What this purple line represents, or if you're colorblind, what this gray line represents is any number, 9, 11, a billion. If I were to take that number and plug it into this original R, this would be a true statement. Okay, whatever number I get would be greater than or equal to 125. So there you have it. That's a multi-step inequality with its graph. Fun. Solving and graphing an inequality is just like solving an equation. However, you have to remember two things. If you multiply or divide by negative, flip the sign. Or if your x is on the right side, you flip everything. We'll get to that when we have to get to that. What I see is three objects on the left of a greater than symbol and two objects on the right, which means I should be able to combine two of the objects on the left. I can. Negative 1 and negative 6 add up to negative 7. Drop down minus 6x, drop down the greater than symbol, drop down negative 11, drop down negative 7. X. Now, whenever I have x on both sides of the equal sign, I like to put my variable on the left because of the way inequalities work. So how do I get rid of a negative 7x? Well, you do the inverse, which is add 7x to both sides and make sure on the left side you're showing that you're adding 7x to the negative 6x. Drop down negative 7, negative 6x plus 7x is just a regular old x, so that's good news, is greater than negative 11. Now, I've always done my variable on the left side for this reason. Now that my x is on the left, I don't have to worry about flipping the sign. That's good news. Is x alone though? No. Minus 7 is just lingering. So how do I get rid of a negative 7 that's just floating around? Do its inverse and add 7 to both sides. So positive x, or just regular x, is now greater than negative 4. That's my solve part. So I'm going to put negative 4 down here, and I'm going to make sure I put the other number so that everything looks nice. And since I start out with negative 4 and x is greater to that, I'm going to put a circle at negative 4. I'm not going to fill that circle in. Why? Because if it's not equal to or equal to, I'm not going to circle it. I'm not going to fill it in. Now, x is everything bigger than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade to the right of negative 4. By shading to the right of negative 4, I'm saying all of these numbers, 0, negative 2, 1,000, if I were to plug into these x values here, this all the math would work out to be a true statement. I'm not going to do that because that's going to be gross, but that's what it means. All of these numbers are solutions to that inequality right there. Fun. 
All right, look at this inequality, not pretty at all. We've seen equations that look like this, but now we have an inequality that looks like this. The difference between equations and inequalities is that symbol right there. Now, if we have an inequality to solve, there's two things that we have to remember. If at any point you multiply or divide by a negative, you need to flip the symbol. If at any point your variable, let me make the uh, line down. And if at any point you do this and you have like something like 9 is greater than P, I don't like that. Change it to 9 is less than, or P is less than 9. Okay, flip everything if you need to flip the variable. So I'm going to treat this as if it's a regular equation until we get to these points right here. So step number one is distributed property. 3 times P is 3P. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and then drop down negative 5p is greater than negative 3p minus 6. Now, on the left side, I have three objects, and two of those objects are like terms, so let's always combine them. Negative 2p minus 9 is greater than negative 3p minus 6. Okay, now, I have variables on both sides of the equal sign. Because I want my variable on the left, I'm going to force it that way and add 3p to both sides. This gets rid of the variable on the right side and puts my variable on the left just like I want it so we don't even have to worry about that. And this is going to be super nice because negative 2p and positive 3p make 1, so 1p. p minus 9 is greater than negative 6. Add 9 to both sides like you normally would. And I didn't have to worry about any of these rules up here. None of that happened. P is greater than 3. So let's put 3 somewhere on here. And then fill in all the numbers like so. Now, P is greater than 3 is a statement that says all of my answers are numbers that are not including 3, but everything bigger than it. So... P is greater than 3 means we circle 3. Don't fill it in because if you have it filled in, it means you're including 3, and we don't want to do that. Since P is greater than 3, we're going to shade to the right of it. This is saying all of my numbers that are bigger than 3 are going to be covered by this green line, and since I'm going to put a big arrow here, that's going to go on forever. So numbers like 5, 6.5, a billion. If I were to take a billion and plug a billion into P, plug it in again, plug it in again, I would end up with a true statement. I would get some number that's going to be bigger than some number, and it would be true. So that's what we get when we solve and graph uh, crazy multi-step inequalities. Solve and graph this wacky inequality. This is going to be wacky. It's not going to be pleasant at all. Now, when you solve an inequality, you solve it like a regular equation. You just have to remember two rules. Rule number one, if you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip your inequality. Rule number two is if my variable for some reason ends up on the right side, you can flip everything to move it on the left side. Flip everything. So I'm going to solve this like a regular old equation until I run into two of these issues. We'll see, though. One of the issues I shouldn't run into based on the way I always solve these. On the left side of the inequality, I have distributed property and only distributed property. So let's do that. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 2 times positive 6 is negative 12. N comes along for the ride. Drop down the less than. 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12 and comes along for the ride. Now something extremely strange happens because when I look at variables on both sides of an inequality, I'm like, all right, well, let's always get rid of the one on the right. So it forces my variable on the left, which is what I always want. So I'm going to do the opposite of 12n and add 12n to negative 12n. And over here, I add 12n to negative 12n. Did I do something wrong? No. That crosses out. But also, that crosses out. Did I do something wrong? No. So I drop down negative 10 is less than 48. Now, whether it's an equation or an inequality, if your variables disappear and you are left with what in this case is a true statement, negative 10 is smaller than 48, your answer is going to be all real 
numbers. Maybe your teacher might say infinitely many solutions. Uh, I know I do that in some of my classes, infinite solutions. It all depends on how your teacher words it. Basically, every answer is correct, every single one. If I plug in one and one, it'll work. If I plug in a billion and a billion, it'll work. If I plug in negative a trillion and negative a trillion, it'll work. Now, infinite solutions, all real numbers, it all depends on how your teacher words it, but one of those phrases is gonna be good. And if you're like, well, how do I graph everything? Well, you just put a nice big, nice big fat line like that on the entire number line like that. And that represents everything. So yeah, kind of a strange problem, but kind of easy when you think about it. All right, sweeties, this is called a compound inequality. It's called a compound inequality because you have two different inequalities attached by a word. And in this case, the word is or. So before we even look at this word, let's take a look at each inequality individually. What you do is you solve each one completely on its own. So the one that I have here in red is m minus 2 is less than negative 8. In order to get m by itself, you have one step, and that's to do the inverse of subtract 2, which is add 2 to both sides, like so. That gets me m is less than negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. Signs don't flip, nothing like that. The other inequality is m over 8 is greater than 1. In order to get m all by itself, since 8 is dividing m, you multiply both sides by 8. So I'm going to surround you by parentheses. That crosses out. Now m is all alone on the left, and it's going to be greater than 8. Now the word or will not go away. Now what or means in an Algebra 1 sense when you're dealing with inequalities is your m represents any number that could be less than six or it could be greater than eight. Like for example, I can pick zero. No, I can't. I can pick 10 because 10 is greater than eight. It's not less than negative six, but it's definitely greater than eight. I could pick negative 10 is probably what I was thinking. Uh, and that would work because it's less than negative six. It's not greater than eight, but it only has to be one or the other. Now, how do you graph an or inequality? Well, you graph both inequalities on the same number line. All right, so negative 6 and 8 are kind of far apart from each other. So what I'll do is I'll mark this as 0 and then do even numbers, and I should be safe like so, like so. So both of my numbers are a hit. And then you graph each one on the same number line. So m is less than negative 6 means I put a circle at negative 6. I don't fill it in because you don't count negative 6. And you care about all of the numbers smaller than negative 6. So you're going to graph or rather shade to the left of it. Now if you're thinking, oh, I'll just graph the other one on the number line, you're absolutely right. You go to 8, you put a circle there, and you fill in to the right of it. Don't fill in the circle because 8 doesn't count. Now, what these two mean is that I can pick any number in any of these shaded region, and that'll make this a true statement. If I pick 50, 50 will work for the blue inequality, and that's fine. I only need it to work for the blue or the red. I can pick negative 50, and that'll work for the red inequality, and that's just fine. What I said before when I misspoke and said 0 won't work because 0 is not less than negative 6, and 0 is not greater than 8. So basically, negative 6 through 8 won't work. Everything else does. So that's how you graph an or inequality. All right, this is called a compound inequality. And this is what's also called an in-between compound inequality because our variable is located in between two inequalities. Now, we're going to view this as if there's three sides to the inequality. And no, I did not misspeak. N is in the very middle of everything. Okay, nine is tagging along when it shouldn't be. So we have to get rid of nine. How do you get rid of a positive nine that's just floating around? Well, you subtract it from nine. And if you subtract it from nine, you subtract it from not both sides, but all three sides. 
what that does is the middle now becomes positive n, which is just n, and now n is all by itself alone in the middle. Negative 10 mm, is <laughs> negative 1 minus 9. I think I salvaged that. And 17 minus 9 is 8. Now, this is called an in-between statement because when you have number is less than n is less than a number, this is literally saying that our variable, the numbers that we care about, is in between negative 10 and positive 8. So how do we show this on a number line? Well, negative 10 and positive 8 are kind of far apart from each other, so why don't I put 0 in the middle and go by even numbers, and I think I should barely be able to just fit this in. Did it over there, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10. What you do with an in-between statement is since this number is less than 8, we are literally saying that n lives in between negative 10 and 8. So here's negative 10. I'm going to put a circle around it and not include it because that's not or equal to. Let me get a thicker one like that. I'm also going to put a circle at regular 8 and not fill it in because that's not equal to either. And n is any possible number in between negative 10 and 8. So I'm going to shade all of the numbers in between negative 10 and 8. That green shading says I am allowed to choose any number in between negative 10 and positive 8, plug it into the original equation, and I'll get a true statement. Like I can pick 2, and when I pick 2, I would get uh, 9 plus 2 is 11, so negative 1 is less than 11, which is true, which is less than 17, which is true. Okay, so in-between statements are literally just what they sound like, in-between. Solve and graph this terrible-looking compound inequality. Now, the word and lives in between each of these inequalities. We'll deal with that when we have to. What I need to do is solve each inequality completely on its own. So inequality number one is negative 1 plus 5n is greater than negative 26. Solve that inequality like you would solve any inequality. Take that negative 1, add 1 to both sides, cross you out. Let me change my pen so that it's not so thick. 5n is greater than negative 25. N is not alone because 5 is being multiplied to it, so we divide both sides by 5, divide both sides by 5, and now, and I'll write it down here underneath the squiggly, N is greater than negative 5. So this equation is taken care of. Equation number 2. 7n minus 2 is less than or equal to 12. Solve this one like you would solve any or normal inequality. Add 2, add 2 cross you out, drop down the 7, n is less than or equal to 14, n is not by itself because it's being multiplied to 7, so let's divide both sides by 7, divide both sides by 7, cross you out, and let me drop down here, n is less than or equal to 2. Now the key phrase in this is that word and. When you have an and statement in math, Whatever number or numbers you choose have to fit both of these qualities. The number that I choose has to be greater than negative 5 and also less than or equal to 2. So with and statements like this, I like to make a rough draft. Okay, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. I just like to make uh, a rough draft. So... We'll do the one in green, n is greater than negative 5. So we'll just put uh, that and say that you're negative 5. Again, nothing fancy. n is less than or equal to 2 is going to have a filled in circle at 2 and go to the left like so. Now with an and statement, your final answer is where both of these lines completely overlap. Okay, now, do they overlap at negative 5? No, because negative 5 counts for green but not for red. However, it starts to overlap over here all the way up until 2. 
So my final answer is going to be the where these two guys overlap, don't include five, but do include two. So let me go down here. Let me put two here. Um, three, four, I think I made this work. Uh, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. Nailed it. I'm going to draw a line starting from negative five and not including it all the way to two, and it's going to be everything in between. And what this means is any number that I choose that's represented in purple here, like zero, like uh, negative three, like regular two, I can plug into this original equation inequality and that originally inequality, and it'll work for both. And that's what I need. I need inequalities to work for both. And that's how you solve and graph an and compound inequality. Fun. All right, take a look at this in-between compound inequality. Now, an in-between compound inequality is when you have an entire inequality with less thans, or it could be less thans or equal tos, uh, and you have whatever variable in the middle. In this case, this problem is a little different because the variable is not alone, not even close. I have what appears to be a two-step equation. So when you have a compound inequality that's in between like this, whatever you do to the middle, you do to all three sides. So if I look at 3p minus 6, my first thinking is I have to get rid of minus 6 first. So let's add 6 to all three sides. That crosses out. 3p drops down in the middle, less than and less than also drops down. Negative 36 plus 6 is negative 30. Negative 15 plus 6 is negative 9. Now, is p alone yet? Nope. Let's divide everything by 3, divide everything by 3, divide everything by 3, cross you out. p is now alone in the middle. Negative 30 divided by 3 is negative 10. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. And now what this says is P is any number in between and not including negative 10 and negative 3. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to mark this up. So let's do negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. P lives in between negative 10 and negative 3, but not including. So here we put a circle at negative 10. I meant to make that the thicker version, so let's try that again. I'll take it. We put a circle at negative 3. Don't fill it in, though, because you're not including that either. And the number that I choose has to be any number in between negative 10 and negative 3, but you're not allowed to include either of them. So what this blue shading represents is I could choose negative 9, I could choose negative 6.5, I could choose negative 4, I can choose negative 3.1, and plug that into this P in the middle, and whatever number in this blue shading that I plug into the original equation is going to give me negative 36 is smaller than blah, 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 and is also smaller than negative 15, and it'll be a true statement. Okay, so that's how you solve and graph a compound and or in between inequality. This is called an absolute value inequality. Whenever you see an absolute value and an inequality symbol, you're going to have a very confusing problem on your hands. Okay, but if you remember this little phrase, it might help you. It will be also helpful if I had uh, uh, the, the pen working. This is a phrase that I want you to remember with absolute value inequalities. Great or less thaned. No misspellings. Greater less than. Now what that means is if you do a problem and the moment you do what's important with this, if it's a less than symbol, it's going to be the word and. And if it's a greater than symbol, it's going to be the word or. Now whenever you solve these, it's very, very, very similar to when you solve absolute value equations. You need to get the absolute value all by itself. Well, good news, it already is. And at this point, we split this into two different inequalities. It's very similar to what we saw before. The left side, whatever's inside the absolute value, keep it that way. But one of the inequalities, you're going to keep the sign and the right side exactly the same. 
the other inequality, you're going to flip the inequality and take the opposite of the right side. Now, here's the key thing. This was a less than symbol the moment I split it up. Since it was a less than symbol, we are going to use the word and to separate these two. Now, at this stage, what you do is you solve each one individually. Multiply both sides by 4, right? That gets you n is less than or equal to 12. Same thing over here. Multiply both sides by 4. That gives you n is greater than or equal to negative 12. And then the word and lives nicely in between. Now, with an and statement, okay, with inequalities, what you need to do is you need to make sure that whatever you graph, you graph both lines and see where the lines enter uh, or overlap. So what I like to do is I like to make myself a rough draft, and it's not going to be anything fancy. I care about where things overlap. So n's got to be less than or equal to 12. So this is what that would look like. Put a 12 right there. n has got to be greater than or equal to negative 12. So put a negative 12 right there. And it looks like where these guys overlap is they start to overlap right here at negative 12. So fill in a circle there all the way up until that circle right there where they finish overlapping. And then you have literally everything in between negative 12 and 12. So I need to make, what I'll do is I'll put zero in the middle. I'll go by three so I can hit my 12s. That is a four, which is not a three. So let's keep going. Six, nine, 12, 15. Negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12, negative 15. All right. Let's take our negative 12, fill it in because it counts. Let's take our regular 12, fill it in because it counts. And we want everything in between like that. Okay. And that's how you do an absolute value inequality. Pretty gross, but lots of fun. This is an absolute value inequality. Now, solving an absolute value inequality is similar to an absolute value equation, but there's a couple extra rules to follow. One of the things that you should do whenever you see an absolute value inequality is remember this phrase, great or less than. Now, that's not me misspelling anything. That's me using clever wordplay. Now, We'll hold on to that phrase for a moment, okay? What I want to do is, just like the, with the equations, is I want to get my absolute value all by itself. It is. Now let's split these guys up into two inequalities. In each of them, you're going to keep the left exactly the same the way it was inside the absolute value. And if you're like, whoa, 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 it's negative, though. Who cares? Leave it. The one inequality, write the right side exactly the same that it was. The other inequality, flip the sign and make the right side its opposite. Now, this is where that cute little wordplay came in. This is a less than symbol. So when, when you split these guys up, the word that you're going to use to separate these two, because you have two inequalities and you either need the word and or or, okay, the way you're going to split these guys up is since that's a less than, you're going to use the word and. So you have negative 8n is less than 32, and negative 8n is greater than negative 32. Now we solve each of these individually. Oh my goodness, dividing a negative from an inequality. What does that mean? Flip the sign, baby, like that. That's going to happen over here. Negative 8 is going to be divided from negative 32. That's an inequality. And n is less than 4. That word and is still in the middle. Now... With and inequalities or and compound inequalities, you care about where this guy and that guy overlap. So it's not the worst idea ever to make yourself a rough draft. So what n is greater than negative 4 would look like is something like this. So we'll put negative 4 right there. Don't fill it in. What n is less than 4 would look like would look something like this. And I care about where these guys overlap. Well, they start to overlap right here, but you're not going to count the zero because you don't count the zero, not zero circle. Same thing over here. They finish overlapping at four, but you're not going to count four. They completely overlap in between. 
So the graph that I'm going to make is everything in between negative 4 and 4, but don't include those numbers. So if I put a 0 right in the middle, I should be just fine. Like that. I'm going to put a circle at negative 4. I'm going to put a circle at regular 4. And I'm going to shade everything in between. Now, what that means is I could take 0, I can take negative 2, I can take 2, and I can plug that into the original inequality, and that would give me a true statement. Like, if I did do 0, negative 8 times 0 is 0. Is the absolute value of 0 less than 32? It sure is. So that's how you solve and graph a compound. Not a compound, what is this called? An absolute value inequality. Whew. Solve and graph this absolute value inequality. The trick with an absolute value inequality is remembering this phrase, great or less than. I don't know why that T is capital. It shouldn't be. Now, great or less than is clever wordplay for when we do these problems. Now, I'm going to hold on to that phrase because I don't need it quite yet. When you solve an absolute value inequality, you're going to start solving it the way you solve a regular absolute value equation, and you split them up in their two guys. All right, the left side is always going to be 7x plus 4. Always keep the left side exactly the same for both. The right side for one of the inequalities, you're going to keep the sign and the right side exactly the same. However, for the other inequality, you're going to flip the sign and make this opposite, so negative. 74. Now, the other part to this is this clever thing. The moment I split it up, I have to look at my symbol. That's a greater than symbol. A greater than symbol is great or. So the word that we're going to use is or. And then you just solve each of these individually like you normally would. We've done compound inequalities. So you solve each one of these individually. So you subtract 4, you subtract 4, 7x is greater than 70. Divide both sides by 7. Divide both sides by 7. X is greater than or equal to 10. Over here, you follow the same process. You subtract 4. Subtract 4. 7X is less than or equal to negative 78. Divide by 7. Divide by 7 and x is going to be less than or equal to oof, uh, negative 11.1. We'll leave it like that. It's much worse than that, but we'll leave it like that because, you know, when we have to graph it, it's terrible. What's my word in the middle? Or. So that's me solving it. Now it's time to graph. Now, when graphing these, if it's a or statement, you can have both uh, number lines on the same number line. So since these are far apart, what I'll do is I'll go by 5. So 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Probably a bad idea that I did it this way, but it's too late. I already committed. All uh, right. And then you just graph both of them on the same number line. X is greater than or equal to 10. Put a circle at 10. Fill it in, shade everything to the right side. X is uh, less than or equal to negative 11.1. Well, here's negative 10, so negative 11.1 might live somewhere around there. Fill it in, shade to the left. And what this means is I can choose any number in either of these shadings, any number in either of these shadings. I can pick 20, I can pick 1,000, I can pick negative 20, I can pick negative 1,000 and plug it into that guy up there. So if I were to pick 20, that would be 7 times 20 is 140, and 140 plus 4 is the absolute value of 144, which is still greater than or equal to 74. So all of these guys work. But that's that. That's how you graph uh, and solve and graph <laughs> an absolute value inequality. I uh, hope this helps. Solve and graph the absolute value of P minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Whenever we're solving an absolute value equation or inequality, the first thing you want to do is you want to get the absolute value part all by itself. So the way we do that is since minus 3 is in the way, let's add 3 to both sides. The absolute value of P is now less than or equal to 3. 
Great. With absolute value inequalities, there's a phrase that you need to remember, and that phrase is great or less than. Now, clever wordplay. We'll get to that in a minute. Once your absolute value is all by itself, just like equations, you're going to split this into two. And just like equations, you keep whatever's inside the uh, absolute value, you keep that on the left side of both of them, no matter what it looks like. The one inequality, you keep the sign exactly the same and you keep the right side exactly the same. The other inequality, you flip the sign and you take the opposite of the right side. That's your other inequality. Now let's go back to these words, great or less than. Since the moment I split this up, it was a less than or equal to, that follows the less than rules. So this is an and statement. Now, the numbers that I want have to be less than or equal to three and also greater than or equal to negative three. So with and compound inequalities, I like to make myself a rough draft because you care about, since this is and, where both of these inequalities overlap. Okay, so I care about uh, if this is negative three and this is three, I care about the stuff less than or equal to three. I care about the stuff greater than or equal to negative three. And I care about where they overlap. They seem to overlap starting and including negative three and go all the way up until regular three and ending at including regular three. They don't overlap bigger than three. They don't overlap smaller than three. So what I need to do is I need to make myself the numbers for my um, number line like so. And then I'm going to do exactly what I did up here in green. I'm going to put a circle and fill it in at negative three. I'm going to put a circle and fill it in at regular three. And I care about everything in between. Now, what this means is if I were to pick numbers like zero, two, negative one, and plug that into the original equation, it'll be a true statement. If it's not shaded, if I plug it into the original uh, uh, inequality, not equation, if I plug it into the original equality, it won't work if they don't fall within these green guys. Okay? So that's how you do it. All right, one more absolute value inequality. What you want to do with an absolute value inequality is you want to get that absolute value all by itself. So if you're dividing an entire chunk of stuff by one number, if you're dividing an entire side by a number, multiply both sides by that number. That allows the absolute value to now be on its own, like that, the twos cross out, and that's going to be greater than or equal to 10. Now what you're going to do is you're going to split this up into two inequalities. Okay, the left side of each inequality are exactly what appears inside the absolute value. Don't change it. One of the inequalities is going to be greater than or equal to, so keep the sign and keep the right side. The other inequality is flip the sign and make the right side its opposite. What we're missing is a word in between. So you want to memorize the phrase great or less than. Now, what this does is this helps me remember that the moment I split these up into two, I look at that inequality right there, and that's a greater than symbol. So I'm thinking great to or. So what's the word that goes in the middle? Or. So just like we've always done with compound inequalities, you solve each one individually. So minus two, minus two, three X is greater than or equal to eight, divide by three, divide by three, and you get x is greater than or equal to 2, two and 2 thirds, 2.666, whatever. You do this guy the same way, minus 2, minus 2, cross you out. 3x is less than or equal to negative 12, divide by 3, divide by 3, cross you out. And that just gives you a nice x is less than or equal to negative 4. Again, the word in between is or. So what we care about when we graph this is numbers that's bigger than 2.6 repeating, or it could be smaller than negative 4, and you're allowed to include these numbers. Now, when you have an or statement for a compound inequality, you can put both lines on the same number line. So let me label this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, there's my negative 4, negative 5. If I wanted to graph this guy right here on the left, 
okay? I'm going to say, all right, well, two and two thirds is going to be right around here. So let's put a circle around here. Why am I filling it in? Because it's equal to, and we care about any number to the right of it, greater than that. So we're going to shade everything to the right. Bada bing. What we care about this guy is everything at negative four and smaller than that. So uh, that's our answer. I mean, anything that lives within the, uh, the, the red or the blue is a possible answer. So if I pick five and plug that into the original equation and did some math, I'll get a true statement. If I pick negative five and plug it into the uh, original problem uh, and do some math, I'll get a true statement. Okay? Compound inequalities, absolute value inequalities, they're all the best. Hey, hey.